And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Time is made up of hours and days, while seasons are made up of time. The interesting thing about seasons is that they do not have a fixed starting point. Rather, they evolve gradually from one season to the next until there is a complete change from winter to spring, spring to summer, summer to fall, and fall to winter. And so goes man's spiritual evolution as we move from one season to another. Solomon wrote, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So it is that over the past 2,000 years, many have tried to determine the times and seasons and failed. The disciples were no exception, asking the Lord after his resurrection, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? How did Jesus respond? It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. And so goes man's spiritual evolution as we move from one season to another. What is critical to the understanding of times and seasons is the understanding of fullness. Strong's defines fullness as repletion or completion or what fills or what is filled. Oxford Languages defines fullness as the state of being filled to capacity. In scripture, seven is the number denoting fullness. Regarding a fruit tree, fullness typifies the end of the cycle of sowing and reaping where the tree's fruit is fully ripe, abundant, and ready for harvest. Of course, Jesus used a fruit tree as an analogy for what is in the heart of people, saying about false prophets, you will know them by their fruits, and again, every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit. We'll come back to this later in the series. Once we understand the spiritual meaning of seven, it helps us to better understand many things in scripture. As an example, Galatians 4.4 tells us, when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. In Romans 11.25, Paul speaks of the fullness of the Gentiles coming in. Fill, filled, full, fulfilled, and fullness. When you see these words, you're seeing a seven. Perhaps one of the more precious stories revolving around the number seven is found in Mark 6, verses 31 through 44, where Jesus fed a great crowd of people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Five is the number of grace, while two, the number of witness. Together, we have seven, which we could then define as a witness of grace. Following the feeding of the multitude, we're told that they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish, 12 being the number denoting governmental perfection and divine authority. Without a doubt, seven and its meaning are very important to our understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It is found 88 times in the King James New Testament, 55 of those in the book of Revelation. Now, here's where things take a bit of a turn. In Revelation, six important sevens make up its content. They are the seven spirits of God, the seven churches, the seven prophecies, the scroll sealed with seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. There are other sevens as well, but these six stand in the forefront as the structure of John's visions regarding God's purpose through Christ. When we multiply six times seven, we have 42. Coincidence? Probably not, since we find the following. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for 42 months. And the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. 42 months. Is this literal? I don't believe so. Rather, it signifies the evolution or unfolding of God's purpose through Christ 
through the church until fullness is reached. As a matter of study, this is not the only place we find the number 42. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. Friend, three 14s is six sevens or 42, is it not? Might there be more to these passages than what first meets the eye? Now, here's one of the most important aspects regarding the number seven or fullness in the book of Revelation. Though there are seven angels or spirits of God, there is just one spirit. Though we see seven churches, there is but one church. Though there are seven prophecies, all proceed from the one voice of the Lord, typifying an increase until fullness is reached. Though there are seven seals, there is but one scroll. And though there are seven trumpets and bowls, like the prophecies, all proceed from just one voice, again signifying an increase until fullness is reached. And so goes man's spiritual evolution as we move from one season to another. Remember our three feasts of Israel that I mentioned in part two? Might this have something to do with our three fourteens, since the spiritual meaning of fourteen is deliverance or release? So, how important is the principle of sowing and reaping? Very important. For the operation of this divine principle is why times and seasons exist. The seed is the word of God. So unfolding before us is God's divine purpose through Christ, through us, until his will is fully accomplished. Let me close this study with the following. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth.